love this song. Yeah, just like the, the clap line. Uh, okay, so let me see. I'll turn the junk fan off. This coil, high BL. Um, let me abbreviate this real quick because I was watching the, the video update and it was like 20 minutes of not really getting anywhere. And not that I meant to do that, just that there's a lot of information to consume and to evaluate if you're gonna design this, if you're gonna do it. And you're gonna run into these problems whether you like it or not. And so um, I've been doing this since 89 and so I've been learning the whole time and uh, I'm just trying to share the information but there's a lot of information and different people's application is going to apply differently depending on what your end goal is so back to what you're seeing in the market high BL nothing wrong with high BL except that it tends to be more peaky right it has a sharper Q right which means at the at the resonant frequency, it's sharper. It's really it's much higher, and so that ha it's more resonanty, right? The resonant peak is is greater. Um, nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> it's just more definitive about playing low. Meaning, at your FS, that's it. You're not going to get anything below that. Sometimes, if you have a, a smaller Q, right, or or broader Q, I should say, because Q is the how peaky. The resonant frequency is right if it's a it's a low Q like a 0.7 it's broad if it's a higher Q like a 4 and you see this in uh, equalizers that have that allow you to choose the Q of the band that you're boosting or cutting so um, typically you want broader cues for a uh, more overall performance uh, as far as an equalizer goes but as far as performance goes in a subwoofer um, Broader cues are great for like sealed boxes because you can manipulate them more. Um, something with a more narrow cue, um, it's only good to that resonant frequency and then that's the fuck it. So it resonates at that and then that's it. Um, now there are exceptions to this. Um, one of them was uh, a home speaker designed by Bob Carver, which had four 12s in it, but the 12s were like an open baffle design and the FS was like 100 or 150 Hertz. And what he did was he crossed it below the resonant frequency, but I don't want to get into that. That's just an example. Again, these are not hard and fast rules. It depends on how you design them. And I, I wish there was like math for this and I'm sure there is, but it's just so complicated. I'd rather have, I'd rather teach you an intuitive way to design and build your own speaker. And, and really that shortcut is look at other people's designs. Okay. So, uh, Look at uh, the way that Rockford solves problems. Look at what they do. They use a really floppy, soft spider. Some of that has to do with cost um, and also the warranty. They're only gonna be married to it for a year. So they don't give a shit about something that's more durable. And that's where you can come in. You're only buying maybe 10 spiders at a time from say Lord of Base or from me. So you can afford to pay a little bit more per, per spider. You know, they, they're like $2 for a spider. Fuck you, China. And so um, that's just the way that is on their scale, right? Because they're buying 10,000 pieces at a time. So, but um, let's see, high BL. Yeah, so what you're seeing is the BL, the higher BL is a cheat, right? That was first displayed when they were promoting, Orion was promoting the Orion HCCA. They said, hey, this does really well in small sealed boxes, small ported boxes. Me, guess what? It does it does well in all boxes. That's what it does well in because it had a much heavier coil at the time. This is again, this is relative because everything before 19 what 98 or 97 or whenever that came out, uh, it was all it was all like like shit, really light stuff. You know, all the XTR woofers, basically um, uh, augmented uh, professional audio drivers uh, with a little bit heavier coil and a little bit stronger magnet. It wasn't until uh, designer uh, Tilo Stompler of TC Sounds came in and said, hey, what if we did a really big magnet, right? Which at the time was like the, the TC9. 
uh, dual one inch slug, seven inch, seven and a half inch, I think, in diameter, and then a heavy copper coil. Now I say heavy, but it was relatively heavy. The, this one is a half a pound, which is ex excessively heavy. This one is good for certain applications, like if you have a really, really small box, or if you want a, a big driver like an 18 or a 15 to work in a really small box, it's great for that. The compromise is that uh, you need lots of electricity and a very strong magnet structure. So that's which that's the compromise. So and uh, somebody pointed it out. It's uh, Hoffman's Iron Law, which is that uh, you, you can't have high sensitivity and the woofer fit in a small box and take lots of power. Like you have to give up one of them in order to get the other. And typically, what the compromise gives is people do a high BL, uh, long uh, coil, so it has the the coil has thermal mass, right, versus aluminum and also a high strong motor and that can be either uh, ceramic ferrite or it can be neo it doesn't matter um, but you're looking for a very high flux uh, gap flux um, charge and so you you get that from a, a having a really powerful motor and then having a very long coil and then lots of electricity so but electricity meaning power is very cheap and so that's why it's not really that big a deal uh, as far as design goes, again, you want to be uh, aware of your application and really your your market uh, of what you're trying to approach. And if you're doing like a SPL woofer, you want to do actually a light coil, not a heavy coil, but you want to do something with a high thermal mass. And that's where like an aluminum eight layer comes in handy or even a six layer if you're just going to do a single coil. Now, when I say single, what I'm talking about is that it only has one termination. So you, you can actually just hook up one coil on this dual coil, and that's a single voice coil. So the whole terminology for single voice coil versus dual voice coil, it doesn't matter. It's all the same thing. It's a coil. And so that's what I was trying to explain to Anthony Ocker, who is now going by something Tallywhacker, Tommy Tallywhacker. So anyways, um, he's, he's dumb. He doesn't know any better. And I try to educate people, but when they don't want to listen and they get arrogant and brood, I, I, I don't need to spend any more time with that person. So, um, but uh, here I'll use his example in that case. So uh, let me go over here real quick. So what I did in his case is I used the 4HP quad 2 ohm, which is also known as a dual 1 ohm. It's an eight layer by filler. It's an eight layer by failure. And so what I did was I took off half of the windings. So technically it's an eight layer right here and I took off four layers. So that leaves you four layers and single one ohm, right? That's what I did, but it's by failure. So it's actually quad two ohm, right? So I took off two layers. Technically, if you just look at this side, that's dual two, okay? And then when you wire them in parallel, that's gonna give you a two layer coil at one ohm which is the same as a, a four layer coil wired in parallel. You get two layers at one ohm. So it's it's the same thing. Uh, oh, I've gotten a phone call from Carlos Danger. I gotta go. But um, uh, that's far as Anthony's goes. I gave him the exact same coil performance that he was wanting, um, but he complained but mostly because he didn't know any better. And I was like, wow, this guy is, I thought he was beyond this point. And that's why, I, I really don't have time to argue with people over what's better, single voice coil, dual voice coil, because you're talking about the same fucking thing. And so if you if you don't know the difference between half a dozen and and uh, six, you know, six of something and half versus half a dozen, I don't need to talk to you anymore. So, and I'm not trying to be arrogant. I just don't have enough time to do that, that you haven't done this basic research. So I, this is an advanced program, if you want to call it that. I do advanced work. My videos are not really for noobs. I highly recommend you read books. And like I said, uh, again, to sum it up, um, study other people's work. Study the engineers for SCAR, JL, Rockford, all of the brands. Figure out how they got what they've got, how they got it. And then when you make replacements, study the replacements. That's it. So you want to be a speaker builder? Trial and error.